If you've been following astronomy long enough, you're most likely familiar with the idea of dark matter, a proposition for some kind of an invisible particle that seems to introduce approximately five times more mass into the universe compared to what we physically see with our telescopes. And so, for example, even though in a typical galaxy like the Milky Way we might see a certain number of stars and certain amount of gas, when we look at orbits of these stars, it becomes apparent pretty quickly that there seems to be a lot more hidden mass that we don't observe because these stars are moving way too fast. And that's actually true for pretty much every single galaxy we've seen so far, and that's basically how this idea of dark matter was born. Although technically it was actually Fritz Zwicky that originally proposed this idea back in the 1930s for a slightly different reason. He was actually looking at a galactic cluster known as the Coma Cluster, and here he measured the orbital velocities of galaxies around the central point and around one another, realizing that here there seems to be way more mass once again hidden, because otherwise these galaxies would basically fly apart. And so when he saw this, he basically said, well, maybe it's some kind of a dark matter. Okay, I wasn't there, so I don't really know what he said, but that's the story. And so for many decades now, researchers were speculating that at some point, we're going to find this unusual dark matter particle. The particle responsible for producing all of this extra mass. But despite decades of research, and despite a lot of really complex dark matter detectors, so far nothing has been officially confirmed. There have been signs here and there, but nothing concrete yet. And as a result, a few decades back, back in the 80s, an Israeli researcher, Mordechai Milgram, who you see right here, made a slightly different proposition. He basically changed the Newton's law of gravity just a little bit, suggesting that maybe at far away distances, or to be more specific, at low accelerations, the law of gravity changes and has additional components that could definitely explain what we're observing in, for example, rotating galaxies. And turns out that his prediction was relatively good. He was able to explain why galaxies spin the way they spin, and was even able to explain a few more things. And though it could not explain everything, including for example the observations from the coma cluster, here it was essentially assumed that this is just a matter of time before someone finds a way to explain all of this using this new proposition. It became known as MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss basically, I guess, um, the death of Mond, because he might have been officially killed once and for all. Several major studies, including studies by previous Mond researchers, have now officially shown that there seems to be no Mond effect anywhere after all, at least based on some of the predictions that were made in this unusual proposition, with recent data from extremely accurate observations basically showing us that all of the results seem to be purely Newtonian and not modified Newtonian. And so I guess let's discuss some of these studies and what they've discovered, and to some extent talk about, I guess, the future of dark matter research. First though, as always, you can find all of the articles in the description below, with this one by Indriana Albanik and Harry Desmond basically being the one that summarizes everything. And so one thing about MON that was kind of interesting is that it essentially predicted additional effects at low acceleration that technically could be detected by looking at individual objects in a solar system at faraway distances, or even things like binary stars. Specifically wide separation binary stars, where the distance between two stars is so large that their overall acceleration is really tiny. And so on the outskirts of a typical galaxy, or on the outskirts of a typical star system, we might actually see MOND effects, and even be able to measure them, allowing us to either confirm or disprove this idea. And interestingly, in the last decade or so, there actually have been several papers that to some extent potentially found evidence for this MOND proposition. And so after years of looking into this MOND model, I basically became intrigued because, well, for one, we couldn't really find any dark matter particles yet, and I guess two, a lot of researchers seem to support this idea, even though obviously not all researchers. But this being science, it's cool to have an idea or a proposition but you have to have evidence, and you also have to have a lot of studies, preferably from some kind of a multi-angle approach. And unfortunately, when it came to MOND, most of the studies usually just focused on one of two things. Either galactic rotation curves, or in some cases, very specific galactic interactions that were only predicted by MOND, but not a lot of other theories. And so it really kind of looked more like a confirmation bias 
more so than anything else. Here we needed to have studies that tried to disprove one of these predictions by using the data collected over the years. And in a video a few months ago, we've discussed the first such study. It was actually quite groundbreaking, but it basically focused on the most recent data from the Gaia telescope that essentially collected the data for so-called wide binaries. Various star systems containing two stars that are usually separated from each other by at least a few thousand astronomical units. And at these distances, this is where we should be able to observe MON defects. Which is precisely what this study was about. This was from November of 2023, and in a nutshell, it discovered an overwhelming evidence for regular Newtonian physics in orbits of these various binaries. So basically here, this was one of the first major failures for this MOND hypothesis. Here MOND predicted that a lot of these stars would orbit approximately 20% faster than expected. Yet thousands and thousands of stars were orbiting just as Newton predicted, with the actual sigma value being super super high, suggesting that this is extremely unlikely to be by chance. But naturally, not all MOND scientists agreed with this. Obviously, for a lot of them, this is their whole life here, so there's going to be a lot of disagreements. There were some additional studies trying to disprove this by using similar data, and though they had some success, it was not as significant. Okay, which means that maybe we need more evidence. And while well, that extra evidence was just released on March of 2024. Here they tested MOND for a lot of different bodies right here in the solar system. And that's because we shouldn't just be observing MOND effects for different galaxies, it should also have effects on various comets and various asteroids on the outskirts of the solar system, the places where the acceleration is very low. And this was actually one of the first solar system tests for MOND, mostly based on various trans-Neptunian regions at distances over 100 astronomical units away. And so here, by observing things like, for example, comets, the researchers confirmed that they seem to have a much more narrow distribution of energy compared to what's predicted in MOND, with a lot of the bodies orbiting in these various regions only containing slight inclination to the plane compared to MOND where this inclination is predicted to be much, much larger. By the way, MOND in this case was also sometimes used as a potential explanation for the mysterious Planet 9. And this study basically suggests that none of this would make sense. Here, the MOND once again kind of fails to recreate what we see, and a variety of planetary bodies or comets on the outskirts seem to once again obey Newton, not modified Newton. Not to mention that it makes absolutely no sense for galactic clusters, such as the famous Coma Cluster. One of the recent studies tackles this as well, and unfortunately MOND cannot predict motions of galaxies within clusters, whereas Newton plus dark matter definitely can. As a matter of fact, surprisingly, for many clusters MOND does not provide enough gravitational effect. Whereas on the outskirts of most clusters, according to MOND there should be a lot more gravitational effects, but that's not what's observed in these studies. And so here, galactic cluster sampling establishes that MOND once again unfortunately fails. And lastly, one of the recent studies also decided to focus on one of the predictions involving Saturn. This is actually the most recent study from May of 2024, and here it involves the prediction from MOND known as the solar system quadrupole, something that should be responsible for changing the orbits of planets just a little bit on a scale that should be observable if we have really accurate devices on those planets. And so for this particular study, turns out that we could actually use data from the Cassini mission. The mission that was orbiting Saturn for over a decade and that was able to collect extremely accurate orbital data between 2004 and 2017. And so here, because of MOND, the rest of the galaxy should have a very minor effect on the orbit of Saturn that would shift its orbit by just a little bit every once in a while, enough to be detectable by various accurate probes, but not enough to be detectable by telescopes from planet Earth. And so here, as Cassini was orbiting Saturn, it was actually sending out various radio pulses that were then received on planet Earth. And that allowed us to measure extremely accurate distances to Saturn allowing for an extremely accurate calculation of its overall orbit in the solar system. And once again, just as in previous studies, by using the values from these radio pulses, it was discovered that there seems to be no MOND effect on Saturn either, and there were no unusual anomalies here, as expected in the MOND hypothesis. Or basically Saturn was orbiting as predicted by Newton without the need for anything else. Moreover, even when the scientists try to tweak the calculations a little bit, just to see if it fits with any other similar models, the answer was no. 
it only seems to fit with Newtonian dynamics and with Newtonian physics. Once again, the results here were very significant. And that basically meant that there seems to be no reason to have this unusual quadruple, which is usually quoted as one of the most important propositions of the Mond hypothesis. And so this other proposition known as the EFE or the external field effect seems to not exist either. And so by itself, these are really important studies. Studies that find a way to scientifically disprove something, which is the basis for most scientific research. And by doing this, by disproving Mond, we now have to focus on possibly finding something else as an explanation. Because the effects of dark matter are still there. They're undeniable, they seem to be very powerful, but we just cannot explain it using modern theories. None of the proposed particles so far have been discovered, with only possibly two axions or some kind of an unusual neutrino still being viable candidates. But at this point, this is actually even more exciting because now, after a few decades, we know what it's not. It does not seem to be a quirk in gravitational formula, and it does not seem to be some kind of a massive particle, invisible particle, such as the famous WIMP, weakly interacting massive particles. But it's definitely something requiring research, because there is so much of it everywhere, and it seems to be responsible for affecting pretty much everything in the universe. And so here I guess we go back to the original Fritz Wicke's proposition. At this point, we don't really know what it is. It really is dark matter, the matter that's invisible and unknown. But despite these studies, we're not really closer to the actual answer of what it is. There is however a chance that maybe in the next few years, some of the most advanced and most recent dark matter detectors might finally discover something. And of course, once they do, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. But until then, at least for now, maybe for the next few years, we can definitely put Mon to rest because it does not seem to make scientific sense. All of the evidence we have definitely stacks against this hypothesis, and a few propositions that did make sense could also be explained by basically a kind of a sampling bias. Too much data picked in a certain way. But it also means that we'll definitely be talking more about dark matter in a lot of future videos, because it's just as mysterious as it ever was. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the links in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.